find it difficult to paint clouds that look natural? Do your clouds usually look cartoony or lack tone and depth? In this tutorial, I would like to take you through the steps to make your clouds look natural and realistic and show you some simple tips to achieve a natural, realistic effect with your cloud painting. So let's get on with the tutorial. So the first thing you need to do to prepare your surface for painting is to get your watercolour paper and stick it down to the table to avoid warping. The paper that I will be using in today's tutorial is Arches 300 DSM cold pressed paper and all the links to the projects that I am using in today's tutorial are in the description below. I will also be using Winsor & Newton Cotman half pans and I am using the 45 pan set. If you would like to see the review on the 45 pan set there is also a link to the review in the cards above. So you will need to wet the first area down just before you start painting. Don't wet it down and leave it to dry because then you will not achieve the desired effect. I'm starting to sketch out the clouds very lightly with my size 4 paintbrush and this is a silver black velvet paintbrush size 4. The reason I'm not sketching these out with pencil is because I want quite a light sketchy feel. Once the paper is dried I'm wetting it down again with my large paintbrush and I am then adding a light wash of Payne's Grey and I'm picking out the dark tones on the clouds and I'm working from a reference image from each of these images so that I can get the realistic effect of the clouds. The reason why it's important to look at a reference image is because it gives you an idea of where the light source is where your dark areas are, where your mid-tones are and where your highlights are so that you can achieve a 3D effect. For the second study I am trying to focus on achieving more detailed clouds. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I will be sketching in very lightly with the sketching pencil the detailed clouds they are definitely going to be more detailed than the first study and then I will be painting very carefully around the outlines with cerulean blue but this time it's going to be more concentrated and that means I will be adding less water to achieve a darker tone to the sky. So now I'm adding in a watered down mix of Payne's Grey. When you are using watercolours you should remember that they always dry lighter. So this may look dark initially but it will dry lighter. For the last painting I'm starting by adding a background gradient and the challenge will be mixing that gradient without getting a unpleasant green colour in the middle. So I've started with the cerulean blue at the top and initially cadmium yellow but then 
adding a layer of cadmium orange on top. If you allow the paper to dry slightly so that it's damp, not wet, but damp, start to apply layers of clouds in Payne's Grey so that it's light Payne's Grey, not too dark. Start to sketch out your cloud areas with a small brush. I'm using a size 4 silver black velvet brush. And then when the paper is completely dry, you can add your dry on wet layer for the details. Now to my favourite part, where we take off the tape to reveal the finished painting. Overall, I'm really pleased with my cloud practice piece, especially the one on the far left and far right. If I were using these in a the background, they would be the best ones to use because the one in the centre, I would say, would be too dominant and um, would overtake anything in the foreground so those two would probably be the best ones to use. If you found this tutorial useful make sure you check out the watercolour playlist where you will find tutorials and reviews that relate to watercolours. Don't forget that the links to all resources used in today's tutorial are in the description below and if you would like to see more content like this in the future, make sure you hit the subscribe button and hit the bell to be notified of future content.